Welcome to the TuckCast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasegee Fly Shopping Guide Service. Located at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City and 530 West Main Street, Silva, North Carolina. Tuckasegee Fly Shopping Guide Service is your number one stop prior and after your epic fly fishing adventure in Western North Carolina. Visit tuckflyshop.com for stream flow information. Book a guided trip or even shop for your official Tuckasegee Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. Today's episode is brought to you by Norvox. From their original 1970s prototype to the latest Legacy C in five amazing colors. Radical Red, Sunset Orange, Shamrock Green, Royal Purple, Liberty Blue. Norvice has been committed to one thing, efficiency. By adding the Norvice Auto Bobbin to your Norvice, you can tie better flies faster. For more information, visit www.nor-vice.com. Here in our Silva Studios today, we have Coach Dale Diesel Collins, Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, and I'm your host, Shannon, Big Mess Messer. All right, everybody, Dr. Johnny Fever here for WKRP in Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, my bad. Welcome, everybody, back Wrong to job. another exciting episode of the Tuck Cast with a splash of bourbon. Hello, everybody. What's up? How's it going, guys? Oh, uh, who is that? It's a different voice. Dale, you changed your voice. Yeah, and grew a oh. lot of hair. Uh, there we go. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, I do feel like Chris Chris got some of your hair at some point. <laughs> My like, brother from another mother. <laughs> <over> <laughs> here, man. He's got some thick hair. Well, perfect, man. Welcome, everybody, back to this week's episode of the Tuck Cast with a splash of bourbon. We do have another guest here, back-to-back weeks, Chris Hart, who is our Sims rep here in the local area. So, Chris, welcome to the Tuck Cast. Hey, thanks, guys. What's the what's the formal name of your your agency? Uh, my rep agency is Southeast Trading Company. There you go. And yeah. and what all brands are you? Right now, we currently do Sims. We do Galvin fly reels yeah. and um, brake line sunglasses. Okay. Awesome, awesome. We'll talk. We'll talk more about that stuff here here shortly. Um, a lot of things going on. I was. Uh, I really didn't know what to think last night about seven thirty, sitting in the recliner, not at the vice. Still haven't been at the vice since I got that recliner. So that's about to change. Though I got to clean that tying room up. Man, the home run derby was last night. Holy smokes! I didn't, I didn't watch it. Shannon did. What are your thoughts, Shannon? I was multitasking. Orange Palmer's on the way to the fly shop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of hype to uh, to Otani, for sure. And you talk about the pressure of it. He didn't make it past the first round. Yeah. That's so okay. he hit him all during Did, the season. He, he, he hit him all during the season, but just the way he hits the ball, the way he attacks the ball. Um, the other part of that, too, is there's a lot of pressure on the, the person throwing. Throwing, you, throwing. Yes. And I think you often forget about that. This year, across the board, everybody was a paid professional. Uh, now, the gentleman who ended up in the finals, who's the cancer survivor, man, his uh, the person Trey throwing him was, was a college, his college Notre Dame, uh, yeah. uh, BP coach that threw to him there. So he wasn't a pro coach, but he's college, so he's yeah. definitely a professional in my book. There was no cousins, there was no dads, yeah. no aunts, no uncles throwing BP out there. It's so important, and now this format. It is timed. It's not like ten outs, right? You know, it's it's timed. So you need to be throwing darts to yeah. one specific and get into a rhythm. There was at one point for a couple guys, two balls were in the air while the next one was getting pitched. Mm-hmm. Like they hadn't landed yet. Two balls. Like, it's key. That's quick. It's key because it is a numbers game. Yeah, it really is. I love the it's format. A, it's a numbers game. I mean, when you see somebody get hot, you can tell. It's like, so, boom. so I, I take it Chris didn't watch it. So I didn't watch it. But who, who's pitching to these guys? It's it's like. Like their pitching coach for the team, or so they bring their own pitcher on with. Yeah, yeah, they get to pick who pitches, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, they got the L screen set up. I mean, it's just like BP prior to a game. Shohante had uh, his interpreter was a catcher. <laughs> oh, was it really? Yeah. I yeah. told Stacy, was like, this is what a normal guy looks like in the MLB ring. I think he cost <laughs> him. It, so before they went to the to the swing off, he had a little bit of time, and the catcher stood up. 
go back and look. He took and a break, too. He took he, some Gatorade. Yeah, but no, no, no. <laughs> Before they had like five seconds left, they could have thrown one more ball. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And the catcher stood up like this, like he thought he had advanced, and that oh. ball didn't get out of. The, he had one more shot. Oh, short. Yes. So you know the format for anybody that didn't watch it. Exactly. That was a. F- you know, it, it, they had a bracket. Okay, they were they were seeded hitters. So like you had an eight seed and an one seed, and I think Mancini was the eight seed. Ended up in the final. Uh, Mancini was not the. He was the eight. He was not the eight seed. And he was down there though, wasn't he? No, the the uh, Soto was the eight seed. That's right. So, that's right. I don't know any of these guys. So they got yeah, three minutes, except for the one pitcher that hit all the home runs. So they got three minutes to hit as many balls as they can, and if they go four seventy five, they get a bonus thirty seconds. Is it? And there was another thirty second bonus too. What was that? If just every time you went four seventy five plus, you got a bonus. I, I can't remember. So a lot of people ended up with an extra minute. Minute. That's a long I way to hit a baseball. There was yeah, I think like a minute five twenty. That's different baseball. It's got to be than what they play. They with. didn't use the humidor last night. Yeah. It was in Denver. So, all right. Atlanta. We'll bring up a sore topic here. It was supposed to be in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yep. Atlanta. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You remember this? Now don't I know you? what you're talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have a lot of listeners in Atlanta, Chris. Okay. Right, hey. So, um, in the Atlanta area, I texted Shannon. Yes. I looked at the radar about the first pitch. Like they're singing a national anthem. I look at the radar, and it is absolutely pissing rain in. Smyrna, Georgia. You said buckets. Buckets. Buckets is what his text said. Yeah, I'm drinking bourbon, so it's pissing now. It was buckets. <laughs> and and it, it wasn't going to end anytime soon, so the home run derby would not have happened last night in Atlanta. However, the people still would have lodged. They still would have bought food. No, no, no. I mean, that's that's getting into the economics I, I and mean, politics of it. Yeah, I want to stay away from that. But but in terms Good of... Idea. <laughs> <laughs> they still would have partied. Yeah. It, they may still got arrested. I, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think it worked out great. I wish the home run derby every year was in Denver. Yeah, no, no. because of the no, no. the thinner air. No, those balls are gone. No. They were me, they were me. estimating an extra twenty four feet on every hit. Last Give me night. a short ballpark. Give me a short fence. Yeah, like Fenway. Give me a short fence. Yeah, mm. yeah. Chris, do you watch baseball at all? I uh, watch my uh, six year old play. <laughs> <laughs> do a little coaching on the side. So, yeah. so the big thing this year is there's a pitcher for the Los Angeles. Is it Los Angeles? Angels. Anaheim Angels. Anaheim, I can't hear. Right? They switch it all the time. So Los Angeles. Is it? Angels. Gosh, yeah. Oh. Um, uh, anyway, he's Angels. hit how many home runs in the season? Thirty three. Thirty three home runs as wow. a starting pitcher. 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 Wow. That's not heard of. So he's told like Babe Ruth. I was like, what no, the no, I got you. Yeah, we went we went to a uh, sounds game up in Nashville with the little guy. You know, it's the uh, it, minor leagues like triple A ball. Yeah. And uh, all the, you know, he kept asking me why the pitchers kept striking out. I was like, well, <laughs> pitchers aren't supposed to hit the ball. <laughs> now you're telling me about this guy that's like he's leading the league in home runs In or Major something. League yeah. Baseball. Crushing. But crushing. pitchers should hit the ball. I would yeah. think so. I, I mean, that it, was one thing about John Smoltz. John Smoltz could hit it. The Braves, they, they had an internal competition. Yeah. I mean, it was bragging rights. Glavin on, and yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. Glavin Maddox, was salty. Maddox, Maddox. Yeah. I like both Maddox complete. Yeah, throw a complete game, nine inning game with eighty some pitches. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it's key, the, eighty. Yeah. Well, hey. So, yeah. in other news, Washington football team still trying to figure out a name. Yeah, they don't they, have one, do they? They came close, but it offended too many people, so they didn't. What was it? I, I, had, I hadn't heard the about one. it. It was going to be the Warriors, uh, maybe. And Warriors, they, they and said it that's too too borderline. Yeah, I can't do that either. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine. It was too close to being. Borderline. Are they still the Wizards in NBA? No. What yes, they are the Wizards. They used to be the Bullets. Well, I mean, remember there's the Bullets. Bull- the, yeah, there right, was the yeah. Washington Bullets. Yeah, man. Well, so that's what's going on in NFL. I didn't know that. Yeah. Whatever so, happened, it wasn't Tebow coming back or something. Tebow's he's he's back, man. Back, yeah, he's yeah. back. Jacksonville is that right? Yeah. He's back. That's big news. He's Jacksonville. Wow. Tied in. Tied in. Tied in. Really? Tied in. Tim Tebow. Hey, yes. Carl Ravage. I don't know if anybody's paid attention, but. That guy's diesel. Like, he is ripped. He did um, maybe some golf coverage or something. This is the commentator, mm-hmm. Carl Rabbit. I know who he is. Um, I can't remember. It was some relaxed format about a week or two ago. Oh, was, was it with Phil and Tom and them when they played? It might have been. Aaron Rodgers and DeChambeau. The matchup. Yeah. Up, up in the, Brady was talking smack, too, man. They all were, dude. Yeah. Man, Phil was lighting them up. Phil was lighting them up. He's like, yeah, but I'm the PGA champion. <laughs> And he's like, and he was giving DeChambeau hell because he was like, hey, you just got outdriven by a 53-year-old, blah, 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 or 50, whatever he is. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun to watch. But yeah, so Ravage is wearing, like, a polo. 
but it was like he went to baby gap or something. Was it all tight, <laughs> like right here, like just <laughs> yeah, squeezing his bicep had, out. And, and it's like he'd lift up his arm. I'm like, I wonder if he's flexing right now. Like he's trying to like point to the gun show. It's like, uh, <laughs> right, there. right over there at that hole. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we, we digress there, but uh, yeah. what else we got going on? Uh, hey, uh, Waynesville. Hey, Waynesville. Waynesville. Wayne's World. Waynesville. The 28786 opening. Tomorrow for the first day, soft opening. Chris is helping us fill it up. I uh, I like soft <laughs> openings. That's a that's a good way to test the market out, guys. Yeah. So kind of don't let anybody know. That way, if you don't have the inventory, you're all right. Yeah. Especially this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, soft openings are fantastic. <laughs> well, they really are. We just circle back to that one. Oh boy. <sighs> oh man. And and Shannon's not drinking bourbon. <laughs> just uh, root so, beer. Out of it's out of curiosity, beer. are we allowed to talk about like what we saw today, or like is anything yeah, that yeah, secret, yeah. or, no, or no. can it be like, thrown no. out there to the public? So no, no, yeah, you can talk about it. Uh, fish hatchery, you can talk about that. So Orvis has got this. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the maintenance <laughs> man in the hotel is going to be talking about it because he seems to like to go in there and thumb my clothes a whole bunch. Is he like right in there now. vacuuming mm. like three times a no, day? No, he, he like comes in and like lurks around the lurks around the uh, the garment racks and. Ask me if any of it's free. Like, oh, oh. It, it'd be weird if he did it once, or, or not weird. I would say it would be not weird if he did it once, but he's yeah. in there like every couple hours. It's uh, kind of <laughs> kind of freaking me. You're out. gonna go in in the morning. He's gonna like pop out. Of I that mean, rack. he's got a key yeah. to the thing. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's got a key to it. Better inventory that rascal. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> he comes in wearing that new shirt right there. Hey, where'd you get that one? At? Man. So basically, we went over and saw uh, Chris today and looked at the the 22 spring line because we have to kind of figure all that out in advance they won't let us just order it day by day for some reason yeah they, they they like to know what they need to make so we went over and checked it out saw some of the new products that are coming out um chris went through a bunch of stuff that i forget half of it now i'm glad you gave us a book yeah i went through a lot of complaining too <laughs> you know it's kind of normal with the tuck guys here you know this why did they put that seam there who's designing that what's wrong with that guy why are the buttons that color yeah what the, what who what are they thinking listen what are they a montana company when, or something have, that's never gonna sell so in the southeast when you have bulging disc when you have bulging disc issues these things become important absolutely you know that's are you talking about my sciatica <laughs> No, <laughs> they're bringing up an ESPN Garrison Hurst, bunch of bulging uh, dicks. Just go I find. Mean, <laughs> just gotta go find that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it was the injury report. <clears throat> we we bring that stuff up. Yeah. Um, we're particular. Uh, we we're on the car ride back over the mountain. Aiden uh, Aiden went with us today. She's like, you know, you guys are really particular. Like. Y'all, y'all pay attention. Y'all, y'all pay attention to this stuff, and it, it matters. And you, like, you pay attention to everything, but what your rep tells you. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> with reps, we got a ten percent rule. I believe it. Yeah, ten percent yeah. of what you say is maybe true. Yeah, yep. the rest of it. No, I'm just, I'm just making. Well, that the, up the, the age-old joke is, how do you know when a rep's lying? That's if his mouth's moving, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. There it is. <laughs> well, no, it, it was. It's always a good time to get over there with you, Chris, and and look at the line. It's, it's good to get out of the the day-to-day routine. And honestly, it is a gorgeous drive from here to Brevard. Um, you know, we, we, we go up the East Fork and up over the Blue Ridge Parkway and come down and we're right there at Sliding Rock looking, look, looking glass creek. You can't say that fast. Look, looking glass creek. Like if you try to look at that, that's the wood. Have for, another sip of whiskey. <laughs> that's, that'll the, help. that's the wood for talking. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it, it, it's a beautiful drive. So it is actually, actually very relaxing to do that, um, and get over there. Kind of so, through that, uh, Pigeon River watershed. That's really good. Watershed. Watershed. The I watershed water. is fantastic. Very yeah. good watershed. We had an article written about the shop up in Waynesville, and they put, how was it worded, that there's great water on the Pigeon. There's great water on the Pigeon River. And they didn't put watershed, and that's what he said. When they just said on the There's pigeon. a lot of people probably think I'm a fool for saying there's great water in the Pigeon River because it, fish glow at dark. Yeah, so. yeah. And it wasn't the paper mill down there or still yeah. down oh, there? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's still there. Yeah. So, But anyways, we Milk saw cartons. a ton of product. All of it was Sims. They got cool stuff. That's all we can say. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, no, tell us a couple of the things that are coming out. Well, you know, even even more importantly than that, guys, I, I, love, the, uh, I love the ability for the retailers to kind of break out of uh, what they're doing right now. It's, you know, like, like you guys know, nobody knows it better than you, but 
your day to day in the shop, you're thinking and you're you you know you're looking at what's right in front of you. Every day I'm hustling. That's right. So it's uh it's kind of fun to get you guys out and have you kind of look towards the future and see kind of the direction the companies are going in and kind of uh kind of where you know it, it kind of prods your brain a little bit, pulls you out of the moment, and makes you think mm-hmm. about next year. So yeah, we got we got a bunch of good good stuff coming out for next year. You know we've dealt with a lot of product shortages like anybody in manufacturing has uh, recently. But I've seen some light at the end of the tunnel, and yeah, we got new G3 waders coming out next year. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. I'm excited now, about that new flyweight boot. The the um, yeah flyweight access boot. Yes, yep. that one. That one's pretty cool. So let's yeah. talk a little bit about the G3 waiter, the G3 guide waiter. That that is a product that has been in Sims repertoire for how many years? Would you say? Long time. Long, Long time. time. Yeah. So it's like. A lot of people think, why do you fix something if it ain't broke? Sure. But tell us what's new on the G3 coming. Well, you know, the, the basic premise of, of the waders, you know, even from the first breathable waders that Sims built really, really hasn't changed a whole lot. Really what we're keeping up with is the, uh, you know, the advancement of materials with the advancement of new technologies from our partner Gore-Tex. Mm-hmm. And then also um, with the uh, new technology and outer, outer materials that help to protect the Gore-Tex or go over the top of the Gore-Tex. So pretty much, uh, you know, we've always had the fit pretty pretty good on those waders, and mm-hmm. uh, and so you can expect the same great fit, but with a few new uh, few new bells and whistles. But just continuing to make them better as far as breathability, waterproofness, and uh, durability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that the durability has never been in question. I think, um, and if there ever was an issue, Sims is fantastic at fixing that. You know, making it right. Um, what uh what else so the flyweight access boot so we've got the flyweight waiter here at the shop and and i love it fantastic material um very innovative molly webbing system with 511 integrated into it i think i'm hitting all my asset points there yeah nice job but you um reach eating for any of there you have to guess no, it I've at sides. I've actually got chrisheartfishing.com in front of me. You, you have to guess that. it at oh, Gore-Tex. Oh, oh, get to that, man. Ah, yes. Yeah. Man. So, um, no, t- tell us about the Orvis. Uh, Orvis. <laughs> there we oh, oh, go. Here, let me tell you, this. Let me, let you, know me tell you about you, the Orvis stuff. You know why that happened? Access. The word access. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, Orvis makes great stuff, too. You know, we're we're, we're good partners. So, out there, so. I do apologize in all, in all seriousness. Uh, flyweight access. Purpose. Tell us about that. Uh, you know, it's it's a new boot that came out. We're utilizing a new rubber compound on the bottom of it uh, that we partnered with Vibram Soles to make. It's a little bit softer than. Uh, I think it's a, a lot, lot of softer. Yeah, it's like, it, it is okay. very okay. supple. Yeah, like I want to lay my head on it at night. Yeah, you can do that. I'll bring <laughs> I'll bring the sample pair over. <laughs> I haven't gotten to wear the boot yet. Really, really? excited about it. Yeah. But uh, when you look at it and you look at kind of the idea of what they've done with flyweight and kind of you know re reinventing the waiting boot, so to speak, for especially our area around here, the mm-hmm. Appalachians, the Smokies. Yeah. I, Should I've, be a good I've, one. I've put the flyweight boot through the ringer on the tuck, on the fly fishing trail, climbing some crazy stuff up in the national park, and I absolutely love it. So I'm really excited when this thing drops in January. Yes. Said. Yep. I, I will. I, I want to be one of the first to, to get a pair and, and – Try them. Make it happen. And and that is that is a real testament to the flyweight boot, just the fact that you guys didn't complain about it at all. No, today. we didn't, did we? <laughs> we didn't say anything about no. it. No. You guys were like, My shoe flyweight boots broke. all good. Is that a problem? Yeah, flyweight boots all good. And I was like, yeah, if they, we had any problem, I mean, if, you know, if a, if a super small pebble could get into the vent hole on it, I'm sure I would have heard about it. <laughs> what what uh, color is the bottom of the boot? And there's a reason why I'm asking this. Yeah, sure. the uh, the The bottom of the boot is a kind of a tan color. Okay, it's like the tan. color of a little bit of ginger ale and a little bit of. Bourbon. So, do you remember back in the day the? Uh, I can't think of the name of the shoe. Timberlands. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite like a Timberland. <laughs> no, it's. I'm not going there with it. But there was a uh, almost like a loafer type shoe, and it had that. Spirits? The Spirits? No, no. It, this is y'all aren't that old. You said loafer. Well, how old yeah. do you think Chris is? <laughs> I don't know how old Chris how old are you, Chris? is. We're about the same age. So it about was 32. a... Uh, <laughs> yeah, 32. Yeah, 32. I'm, for, I'm 47. There you go. Cough button. Yeah, it was... I ain't got one. 
Okay. Oh, my bad. I thought you was wanting me to do something else. You said last week hit the cough button. Uh, That's, uh, I didn't, uh, anyway, but anyway, past that. Carl but th- th- these a lot of folks will know what I'm talking about. There was a uh, almost like a suede loafer um, that had a had that type of color sole on it, and it was a very soft. It was a very supple bottom. Is real comfortable, and what I can just fathom maybe if it's real similar material because it was a grippy. It had really good. Maybe. You wouldn't slip so. Maybe. Gosh, man. So, it's, it's, so I, for all the people out there that don't understand, because a lot of people are going to be like, soft soul, why would you have that? Like, explain why that's important. I mean, we all know. And who but, you partnered with on this? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, they partnered with Vibram. Sorry. The tongues, little, start, little wood for tongues get a little heavy. Ooh. <laughs> so so partnered with uh, with Vibram, I think. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, essentially came out with a uh, softer compound. Yeah. You know, rubber sole that should wrap the rock a little bit more, maybe giving you a little bit more surface area traction on the yeah. rock. And then the softness also helps to kind of push the the algae and the moss off the rock and kind of give it a little bit of a cleaning, which, which increases your traction as well. Yeah. So there you go for all you people that come in and are like, why are there felt on the bottom of the boots? Felt pretty much acts the same way. It's a soft compound that it gives you better traction because you do get that better surface area. Well, and I think what the Vibram does also is it, it really mirrors the image of the rock, you yeah. Know, the, the different undulations and, and things. So, the softer, more supple, the more supple the material, the more it's gonna, like you said, grip that rock, wrap around it, and it's it's gonna be good. Yeah, it's kind of kind of why I pr- prefer soft openings. It it <laughs> uh, it almost it almost um, was so soft it looked porous. Like it, like mm. almost spongy. Ooh. You know what I mean? Okay. That, so it's very similar to where I'm going at with this, and I'll I will find this and throw the name out of what it is, and it I may be a day Are you or still two. talking about the shoe. It's yes, not gum rubber. It's gum rubber. You know about gum rubber? No, I do. It, it's. <laughs> but rubber. anyway, I, a lot of I think a lot of listeners will understand where I'm going with this uh, that are out there. So you've got the new flyweight boot, but is the old flyweight? And say say old because it's not really old. No, is no. that that boot staying around as well? Oh, yeah, correct? yeah, we're gonna make you buy those too. <laughs> you're gonna want both of them do you yeah because you might you know when if you've got the new soft rubber one what are you gonna do when you need the harder rubber one That's you know it. so why would i need a hard rubber one uh, you just might be in that situation where you're up on a different creek different rocks okay. you know okay. flat rocks so what kind of test do they do when it comes to deciding which one of these soles is going to be best for the market oh good question that's a good question man that's technical oh man jeez you guys Put Woodford in me, and then expect me to answer these. <laughs> so y'all questions. think I'm over wow. here? Not I, I'm. I'm wow. running this thing through my and mind. While here. he's thinking about that, we are sipping today on a little bit more of that uh, Derby edition Woodford. Yeah. Compliments of the Hortons. Thank you. Hope you had a great trip out uh, like to Big Sky Montana. Country. Looks, looks like they did. Uh, looked yeah. like the pup had a great time too. So yep. mm-hmm. big shout out to those guys. Uh, thank you again. We're we're still enjoying this. It is fantastic. Yeah. See that if if this was my podcast, that we would have had to have another bottle for the second podcast. Oh that's gosh, for I, sure. see, I see you're ready for another <laughs> round. There. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, <laughs> we're getting technical. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but Shannon, to, to answer your question, you know, really, what it all comes down to is. The engineers at Vibram and the the product development team at Sims really look at, you know, what what causes things to be grippy and not. And then really, it's, I would say with Sims, you know, sets it apart from a lot of companies is they put uh, they put these products onto people's feet. And, you know, you guys, there's a lot of uh, field testers out there that get get these things a yeah. good year or two in advance. And, and they'll put, you know, we've got some guys that'll put. 250 days on those things in a 365 day year so yeah and they also i remember when we went and you know toured the factory they have that room in the back where they like put everything through its test paces like sit there and just bend it and bend it and bend it and bend mm-hmm. it, and bend it and they have machines to and they do go that this stuff. bent you know twenty seven thousand times before it cracked when yep. we went you through know? there that dude was sipping coffee and <laughs> <laughs> reading the bozeman chronicle that's usually what happens <laughs> yeah. they got the machines to do that now you know <laughs> oh man so that's cool, man. Well, what other like highlights do you want to hit on the new products? So there's probably maybe one or two other things. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, or I'm, I'm personally, I'm personally really excited about our new pack line. Okay. Uh, you know, we've got some uh, our new Dry Creek packs coming mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. Um, for next year. Have been slightly redesigned, but still enough of the old, uh, the old standby, really good product to keep it exciting. So those are cool. And this fall, we've got coming a, a 
freshen up on a few things, right? Yeah, we got a uh, new Freestem pack series yeah. coming out in those. Um, geez, that all. ships next month. I think those those August. August, yeah. yeah that's, you that's... guys starting about uh, about August tenth. I would yeah. I would think you'd be able to. Sweet. Folks out there can run around the fly shops and see Freestones the new... are are definitely it's Freestone pack, right? Yep, Freestone sling pack, Freestone um, hip pack, mm -hmm. and then a chest pack. We'll, as well. we'll have those here. Uh, definitely Silva. Bryson City, and uh, hopefully have some over in Waynesville. So um, that's exciting. I'm excited to see those. Uh, saw them with you back over the winter, and uh, which, by the way, that road between Waynesville and Brevard is so much more fun in the winter. It, it's it got really a ice is. on you it. Get, yeah, you can get a little sideways on it. But in all honesty, the long range views with the leaves off are fantastic. Yeah, yeah so it's a beautiful road. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, really excited about that stuff coming out. Um, so so tell us a little bit about your experience in the industry where you've been and maybe where it's going so this might take about 20 minutes yeah let's I, talk about the I industry can, trends i can condense it you know you know i so basically you know everybody's seen the issues that everybody's had with uh with you know delivery of product into stores and yeah. stores having a hard time manufacturers I, I feel equally as bad for the manufacturers as yeah. i do the uh stores because it's it's on all levels and no of, matter where you're listening to this your shop near you has, has been impacted and is you're seeing results of this. So. Yeah. So go in there and just try and buy what they do have. Um, <laughs> that's, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, three or four <laughs> items that yeah. say Sims. Just, just <laughs> buy it, Well, no, just, just, you know, keep, let's, let's keep our local fly shops healthy. That's you know, right. Whether you're, whether you're down there in Atlanta or, or, you know, you're in Charlotte, wherever you're at, keep your local shop happy. And then when you go travel somewhere, keep those guys healthy too. Absolutely. But, uh, for the most part, I think that, um, you know, really, the the industry. There's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel right now. Things are going good. Um, people are catching up. Things have normalized. We're just dealing with the hangover from basically everybody. Uh, you know, a lot of the factories overseas had to shut down, and still a huge thing. You know, in the, in this day and age, is just being able to find people to work to uh, to get this stuff put back together. Yeah. And, and one thing about Sims is the Gore Tex line is still manufactured in Bozeman. Absolutely. Yep. Right in Bozeman at the factory. And they were making, during the pandemic, what they switch over to? Uh, they were making, uh, geez, I th it's PPE some, stuff, I think. Yeah, something like medical bib or something. Wasn't personal, it? personal protective equipment. Yeah. We were making, um, Sims was making a medical gown. Wow. Out of Gore-Tex with a uh, material that I believe, and geez, I hate being on these things because I always feel like I'm going to stick my foot in my mouth and say the wrong thing, but hmm. I believe Gore-Tex donated a whole bunch of material. Okay. And then Sims um, did the uh, did the PPE with mm -hmm. them and gave it uh, basically provided the uh, people at the Bozeman Deaconess Hospital there in Bozeman, and um, I believe that they sold some throughout the uh, the three state area up there. Yeah, in in the Northern Rockies. Bobby's wife was actually wearing some Sims waiters PPE, doing some hospital y stuff. Really? During the pandemic. Yeah, man. They were standing in the rain taking temperatures or something. Yeah, she, you know, with everything being crazy with the who could work and who couldn't and all that, because she works at a hospital, she got put outside check, taking temperatures at construction sites. Oh, boy. And, uh, yeah, when it was pouring rain, she put on waders. I was like, I got waders you can wear. You just stay dry. Waders in a rain jacket. That's perfect. So, yeah. They, were they, came in they were Sims waders? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Advertising all the time. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Had to get that casino built. <laughs> Still building. That's what it was for. It was yeah. for the casino. They were building yeah. the, Still building. the addition, the new tower. Still building. So, yeah, it's, you, you know, the I, w I would say that with, with kind of the fly fishing industry right now, the most exciting thing for me is how many new people we have coming into the mm. sport. It's uh, It's been really fun to watch people getting excited about it. And, you know, I'm hoping that in the future that's going to help protect these resources that we all depend on. So you were in the sport when a river runs through it came out, correct? You know, actually, uh, yeah, I, it, that's kind of a funny story. A river, I, I went to see, I went to college in Bozeman, Montana, starting in 1992, and a river runs through it came out, I believe, late '92 or early '93. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I actually went to the movie theater in downtown Bozeman at the, uh, I believe it's called the Ellen Theater down there. And uh, I was living in Bozeman at the time, going to college at Montana State University. And I went there with a girlfriend, and we watched a movie, and it was great. And I was like, wow, that's awesome, but I really like this girl. 
And then she dumped me a couple of weeks later and I was like, oh man, that hurt. So, uh, so actually my brother-in-law was caretaking a place in Livingston, uh, called the Jumpin' Rainbow Ranch out basically uh-huh. right on the bottom of, uh, of Nelson Spring Creek. And he was living out there and we had a couple trout ponds and a bunch of river frontage on the Yellowstone. So I was actually living with him for a while there in college. And, uh, he started getting into fishing cause I kind of had a broken heart mm-hmm. and, uh, basically Started fishing. The next year, I, I got a job at Montana Trout Fitters, which was an Orba store at the time okay. in Bozeman. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, finished uh, finished my college career guiding, uh, running the shop, and then eventually went to work for the Firehole Ranch in West Yellowstone. And That's awesome. I didn't realize that. So River Runs through it kind of spring yeah, everything yeah. into action. Oh, no, it sounds like the girl my, dumping him sprung everything yeah, into action. Well, but he had I to take her to the movie. Me. I think she I think she dumped me because of Brad Pitt in that movie. So <laughs> I think I, I've been ever since He I, looks better floating down that river than you. He, he sure does. Well, he doesn't float quite as high as I do, but um <laughs> But uh yeah, so so you know a lot of a lot of lot of tradition for me in fly fishing in Montana and uh you know then I went to uh work right when I graduated from college. A uh, personal friend of mine was the sales manager at Winston Fly Rods, mm-hmm. and I started working at the Winston factory in the repair department and the customer oh, wow. service department right out of college. What year was that? That would have been uh, 96, 97. So for everybody that got your rod back that was repaired, it was Chris's fault that it wasn't yeah. repaired correctly. Possibly. Well, I can I can tell you I repaired them pretty good. Yeah. But, uh, a little extra yeah. epoxy here and there. That's right. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> This won't come apart. This it thing's was, been back three times. I'm with an extra layer. That's right. That's right. Or you know, yeah, we we had a lot. It, it was a really cool job. I, I out of all the jobs I've ever had, I probably enjoyed repair department. Did Winston you get to know House. like like orders like oh, Frank broke this damn rod again? Like, did you get to no, know people's rods? No, it was. It, I mean, some of them. You know what you really got to know was it, it, at that point in time back in uh in in the past at Winston, there was a lot of custom stuff going on okay. with rods. So we'd have a lot of people send a rod back in and have us cut the grip off of it and pound new cork rings down onto it and glue them down and then lathe turn them. You know, mm-hmm. they'd send a yeah. blueprint of their hand in and we'd try and Oh my make, gosh. Yeah. I mean, there, there's some pretty it's crazy like some stuff. Dr. Scholl's for your hands. Yeah. It's like those boots that you buy. A lot of the, the um, woodland firefighters buy them where they have to like get a copy of their foot sent in. And Put it in the mold. And they like custom build them. Yeah. I forget the name of those boots. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, that was oh. good. Oh. Oh, that's oh. perfect, man. That sounded just like the intro. <laughs> that was great. A little squeaky cork. I like it. Yeah. So uh so that was uh that was kind of my foray into the into the fly fishing business and then uh opened up a independent rep firm from there and was one of the first independent reps that Winston ever had and okay. carried a bunch of other products like uh Ross Reels of back in those days, Spirit River fly tie materials. Mm-hmm. They're still around. Oh, I don't I, you know, gosh, They're, I don't know. Hairline on the actually, hairline hairline actually, actually, you know, they sent a uh um <laughs> It's nature's spirits, what I'm thinking about, not Spirit yeah. River. Yeah, Spirit yeah. River's not around. That's right. Who bought them out? Hairline. Was it hairline? hairline. Was it hair? You know, hairline. You know, to, uh, that that makes me happy. I, I unfortunately, I've you know, the last six years prior to me coming back into the rep gig, I I kind of kind of bowed out of the fly fishing business for a little while and wasn't really paying attention. But good old Bill Black, who owned uh, owned Spirit River, is a uh, good friend of mine, really okay. good guy over the years. So hopefully, he's sitting on a island with hopefully he cashed out with a squirmy and exactly hopefully he's sitting on a margaritas in a mexican beach or something absolutely that's cool so yeah um so so you you got into repping and then got out it sounds like and your territory for then was what i I started as a sales rep in-house with with winston so i i kind of have a uh it was like a 300 mile radius (laughs) It was way bigger than that. Okay. Way bigger than that. So when I was in house with Winston, I did California, Arizona, Nevada, oh, wow. Washington, Oregon, Alaska, Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Ballpark. How many shops in what year? Nineteen ninety six. That would have been. Now that was about. We're we're approaching ninety seven in the ninety seven. How many shops would that have covered? Not as many as you'd think because that, you that's know, what I'm getting at. You take you take high end fly shops, and you know in California there were probably I don't know there was maybe seven or eight good ones, you know, really good stores in California that could, could actually, you know, require a visit. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Nevada was a few, Yeah, you know, I think the Reno fly shop was one back in the day. And, um, you know, so, and then, you know, but that was back in the day of kind of the mega powerhouses on the Western mm-hmm. side, like uh Kaufman Streamborn, uh, Bob mm-hmm. Marriott supply shop and ready. And some mm-hmm. of those, you know, 
some of those large uh, large West Coast shops that were really cool back in the day. So today, what do you think that's double, triple? I would say it's probably less than it was back then in the really, late 90s. Really, in that territory? Yeah. I think, you know, fly fishing's kind of, in my experience, kind of gone through a little bit of a shift. I think that there's probably more maybe conventional stores that have a fly fishing department in okay. them now yep. than, than maybe back in those days. Hmm. But, uh, Interesting. You, you know, I but I probably shouldn't say that because I don't know for sure. But Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, totally just spitballing here. Yeah, I, you know, but... When I look at it, I and I and I go, it do, it doesn't seem to me like there's a lot more fly shops. It kind of it seems to me like it kind of has a way of governing itself, mm -hmm. the business. You know, it's a it's it's a limited business as far as the amount of good stores and the amount of places that need stores. Right. And now, especially with you know the online thing with people being able to buy online, you know, there's just you know the little fly shop that maybe was in a town where you could never get anything before you could buy online. Flyshopusa.com. Thanks, yeah. folks. <laughs> that that store might not be around anymore right but, um yeah but the you know the stores the stores that are out there now like you guys and you know a whole bunch of them down mm -hmm. here in the southeast and all across the country have you know kind of moved with the industry and, and gotten with either providing awesome service and you yeah. know having a, a store where people trust what you say right and also possibly having a uh you know an online presence which yeah i've got a lot of stores that do both those pretty yeah. well so um yeah it's I would say the industry is really healthy right now, and uh, we got a bunch of new people coming into it. So, no, that, that, that's exactly right. So we had the. How would you compare from your industry knowledge? Because you, you obviously River runs through it was sort of a catalyst here for you, but um, River runs through it to COVID nineteen in terms of impact of industry. Uh, I, you know that <laughs> that's hard to say because one of them was a real feel good thing. You know, okay, um, yeah. You know, River that's a great River. Point. River Run Suet was was about you know, Tom Skerritt, you know, old Pa out there, you know, with the with the boys and the guy getting sunburned out in the weeds and all that. You guys remember Buster that? Buster wants to fish. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> yeah, don't I, you, you know, remember that? I, I Buster gotta, wants to fish. I, I got to tell you guys, that's a doozy. <laughs> that's right. That's, <laughs> that's right. awesome. That's it. But uh, you know, back in the day, actually, you, you know, every do you, do you guys have any guys that come in and hang around the fly shop? Yeah, oh, yeah. like yeah. You, you've got like you got the loafers. You've got you've got yeah. that one customer that comes in and like maybe every six weeks he buys like a spool of tippet or something that's like okay. that. Or yeah, that's right. no, those yeah. guys are awesome. That's but what I was going to tell you is when I worked at Trout Fitters back in the day in Bozeman, there was a guy named Phil Braun. He was a uh, retired high school football coach from New Jersey. He would moved to Bozeman, and he was kind of our shop dude that came in there and drank coffee and hung out with us and. He was awesome. He had great stories, but he ended up being, they cast him to be the uh, poker dealer in the back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In the movie River on Syrup. So go. he was an extra and he was the one, he actually had a talking line in that where he said, you know, uh, Brad Pitt went in there to play cards. And yes. Dealer looks at him and says, yeah, not tonight, Paulie. Yeah. And that, that was, uh, yeah, yeah. that was a close friend of mine, Phil Braun. Wow. God rest his soul. He's a, uh, he's, he was a little bit older when I hung out with him back when I was in college. So he, yeah, he's been passed away for a while now, but cool guy. Interesting. So, so yeah, I mean, people, people got into fly fishing in the last 16 months because life sucked and there was nothing else to do. Yeah. Or, 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 or life was great. Every day, Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Let me, uh, you I know, mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's the glass half full, hey, half I, empty. A absolutely. You know, they, and, and I don't mean that in a funny way because there are a lot of people that, you know, there's a lot they're, of death. They're, yeah. Well, not just the death, but just people, you know, people's people's lives being up in the air not knowing uh, where they're yeah the know, uncertainty working <laughs> with their jobs with all that stuff it was it was really rough but you know i i in in a way i think you know fly fishing really showed its hand is is a is a therapy in a way or mm -hmm. i shouldn't even say fly fishing because that's pretty pretty mono mono just outdoor monocular of us yes outdoor activities getting out whether it's you're outdoor in a, lifestyle whether you're in a kayak whether you're going hiking you know yeah. i i took my family over to brevard last last uh, fall break during covid we have a friend that has a house over there that invited us and uh we went over there and you know we tried to go hiking at one of the falls and we couldn't even get our car in oh, the parking yeah. place i mean it yeah. was insane i'd never seen anything like it so uh you know but point being that the outdoors were really a therapeutic place for people to be and they felt safe it was a right. place you could feel safe and it was a place where a lot of people rekindled some uh you know maybe maybe a little bit of that uh you know when uh, it, it, yeah, I don't, you know, it's, it's kind of a funny thing, but you think about it like a, you kind of wonder what, were people, you know, kind of 
getting a little bit more into that hunting gathering mentality like yeah thing things yeah are i mean we, we had sketchy some, like, we had some people here here buying hooks and fly tying stuff like you could tell they were totally prepping yeah oh yeah prepping. buying buying a lot of hooks and fly yeah. like yeah yeah they're they're more like crap we're out i don't know if we can get those again that's <laughs> right and, you know <laughs> the end of the world happens there's probably not gonna yeah. be any game wardens out there right no well there wasn't yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was April and people were putting fish and coolers on the tuck like oh, crazy. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. You got that whole thing too. But, um, you know, really, I, you were asking about the difference between COVID and, and River Runs Through It really, really made fly fishing glamorous. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, you got Brad Pitt, Tom Skerritt. You know, I mean, how can it yeah. not be glamorous? Right. 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 And, uh, and then, you know, Montana in that. I mean, that, that movie, in my opinion, from living in Montana at that point in time, that movie also introduced not only a lot of people to fly fishing, but it introduced a lot of people to Montana. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it was a big boom for them. Just yeah. People wanting to go check it out, see see the area and everything. Absolutely. So, you know, they had some beautiful footage in it. It's yeah. crazy that movie was shot all over Montana. Yeah. Part of, you know, it was supposed to, the movie or the storyline took place on the Bitterroot, but a lot of it was filmed on the Gallatin. A lot of it was filmed on the Yellowstone River, some, yeah. on, the, some on the western side of the Divide. Kind of like that show Yellowstone. Everybody's probably wanting to go see that ranch that's technically in Idaho oh, yeah. yep, that they're filming at. <laughs> you watch that show? Oh yeah, yeah. What? My wife, my wife and I, you know, we're addicted to it because it's trash. We love trash, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So is that really the Bozeman lifestyle? Where oh yeah, ready man. To I mean, everybody's got yeah. You know, I mean, we we're we're shooting. You know, it's still still blowing up law offices. Cowboys and Native Americans up there. You know, everybody's still kind of like that. <laughs> so. So you you mentioned you got out of the rep rep in agencies for for a little while. What what did you do then? I sold my rep agency in geez, I guess it was two thousand and uh, what year is it? Twenty one. So I, I guess I sold it five years ago, six years ago to my partner. He still owns it. Still got uh both of our names on the uh, on the headlining sign. Still. Okay. It's called Hart Montgomery Outdoor Sales. Okay. And uh, yeah, they they're still they do Costa sunglasses for the outdoor industry out there and. Mm -hmm. um, bunch of other really good products. in the northern rockies ross reels yeah we yeah. had done we had repped up there uh scientific anglers for years mm -hmm. st croix rods we we used to do a whole bunch of stuff gotcha. so when i left i uh i i kind of had it was my midlife crisis and mm -hmm. her name was nitro z9 it was a bass boat <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know you can you can only marinate yourself in in tweed and uh tweed and oil cotton long enough to finally just want to get a big old motor and go screaming across a body of water right. once in a while. So kind of went back to my roots. I grew up for a really formidable time of my life in the uh, Smokies here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, my, my wife and I decided when I decided on a, a career in tournament bass fishing that I was going to uh, move back to Tennessee with my family. So we did. We moved uh, to the Nashville area. How did that conversation go ago. with your wife when you came home and said, hey, I want a tournament bass fish for a living? <laughs> she said, you can make money doing that? And I said, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, then I, uh, that conversation was, it wasn't as interesting as after I'd done it for five years and not made money. That was a much, <laughs> that was a much more interesting conversation. When did it become, at what point did it become that boat? Did you ever have the that boat moment? No, no. When I started, you know, I was living in Montana. That's when she says, that boat is costing us a lot of money. Yeah, no, it, w it was never really that. It was like more that that husband that doesn't have a job is costing <laughs> us a lot of money. <laughs> so, you know, I was... I, it, I've, you know, in, in my own defense, I've never worked so hard at anything in my life. I mean, okay. getting up in the morning, prepping for tournaments, driving to the next one, going out there, practicing, you're all alone on the boat all day long burning lots of fuel, second guessing yourself the whole time. I mean, it's a brutal world. It's, yeah. it's yeah. extremely, extremely addicting, but you know, it really, it really gave me an appreciation for the fact that fly fishing anglers are not the only good anglers out there. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, in a lot of different facets of fishing, there's incredible anglers. It was always funny on the bass circuit because the guys would be like, Oh, what have you been doing for the last 20 years? I was like, we're working in the fly fishing industry. And they kind of look at me like I was, you know, <laughs> like I was not right, you know, and I was like, "You guys know fly fishing; it's really cool." And they'd be like, "Yeah, no, not really." <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, you, but but you know, those, that hierarchy in the bass yeah. fishing world. There's also that hierarchy between casting rods and spin rods too. You know, like for instance, a lot of my Texas buddies that, are, that were power fishermen on the Bassmaster circuit, those guys, if they saw you fishing like a, you know, for, in conventional terms, you fish a drop shot. There's finesse 
ways to try and get bites when the bites are hard to get. Mm -hmm. And they usually involve a spinning rod and light line. And, uh, you know, if God forbid somebody drives by the boat and sees you standing on the front of your boat and practice with a spinning rod, you're going to take a ration when you get back to the campground at night. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there's, there's a hierarchy of, of, of even guys in, in the conventional world too, you know, it's kind of, yeah. So it's, it's not just the fly guys. And I, I think what, what the bass world really taught me and what, what it led me to appreciate was the fact that fly fishing is a type of fishing that you do. And some yeah. people say, Hey, I'm a fly fisherman and that's awesome. And, uh, you know, you can learn so much by, by picking up the conventional rod once in a while about fishing the different water columns, Absolutely. different depths and really fishing on the bottom. Right. Right. Things like that. So it was an eye opening experience. Definitely. When I came back into the, uh, you know, into the fly fishing world, which I, I still conventional bass fish a bunch and, uh, love that part. And I'll still go out with old Shannon mess here and once in a while and hit the uh, blue liners or get be stung <laughs> try not to get stung yeah. get be stung get be stung that's yep. right or uh or you know go strip big streamers on yeah. on the etowa in georgia or something for big stripers i i, I, I want to do it. that holy cow i want to do that it's i was just over there with uh with andy bowen if mm -hmm. you guys know him yep. Co yeah, Co Co company and um you know we we actually went down on the lower river for a while and it was pretty muddy they got in a bunch of rain then we went to the upper river and and you know, put in above the creek mm -hmm. where that was making the river pretty muddy and mm -hmm. so cool seeing the, I mean, even we didn't really get any eats on fly that day or really any eats on conventional either. It was just a tough day out mm -hmm. there, but it's so cool to see those, you know, 15, 12, 15 pound fish follow your fly, yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, all That's the way right. to the boat. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, what else you got? I mean, I got chrishartfishing.com pulled up. There's a lot of good stuff. Here. That has not been updated in a while. Hmm. So what's your, uh, we're going to go back to fly fishing only. Sure. All right. What's your uh, favorite place you've ever fished? Oh, that's a hard one. With, with a fly rod. Yeah, I've fished so many awesome places in my life. I mean, I really, I've been to, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of the, the obvious ones would be the Smokies. Messer I Branch. Absolutely. Really? I I you like just that small blue line kind of. There's something. There's something really quarters. Something really cool to me about standing eye level with the pool that you're fishing above yeah. you, yeah, and just, like looking at the fly from the perspective of the yeah. fish. I like that. But yeah. I mean, I've fished. You know, I've been a fly junkie for the better part of 30 years now, and uh, you know, I've fished Kamchatka. I've fished uh, Argentina down at Patagonia River Guides. A bunch of good dudes, of buddies of mine down there really fished all over the world, you know, uh, even in the salt. So I, I feel very fortunate. It's really hard to put a favorite yeah. on one. You know? favorite. What's the favorite species, maybe? Uh, or a fly rod. Uh, you know, I, I... That you've called, obviously. I, I actually... Yellow dog fly fishing took me down on an exploratory trip to Cuba largemouth fishing about two years ago. Really? I went with Jim Klug, the owner of Yellow yeah. Dog. They and have bass with, in Cuba. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not just Big peacock ones. bass. Oh, no. No. No yeah. kidding. So actually, I did not ever think about. Well, it's probably a little mountainous, too, I'm sure. No, nah, not where I was. Yeah. It was Bay of Pigs ish. Okay. We were down by the Bay of no Pigs. No kidding. Yeah, it was cool. But uh, I, so I actually went down there with Jim Klug, the owner of Yellow Dog, yep, one yep. of the owners. And uh, I went with Tom Bai, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Drake guy, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and we went down there and we literally flew into Havana and caught a uh, taxi ride down to the, was towards it a Volkswagen the Bay of Pigs. Beagle? I don't even remember what kind of car it was. 68 Chevy? I think it was like a 50, <laughs> I think it was like a 55 Chevy or something that burned, was burning a lot of oil. <laughs> oh, you know, but, but it was one of the craziest trips. I'd, I'd never been to Cuba before. And I still, I, that was oh, the man. only time I've ever been go. to Cuba. And I, I hadn't, I didn't fly fish as much there, mm -hmm. except we did tarpon fish one day. But basically when we went down there and there's a large mouse, now, large, blah, 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 Woodford tongue again. <laughs> Woodford. <laughs> There's a uh, largemouth bass fishery down there that actually was Fidel Castro's old compound. Okay. And uh, I can't remember the name of it. Klug, you probably kill me if you hear this, but uh, it was basically Fidel Castro's old fishing compound. Okay. And it was a natural natural lake, but it had been dammed. And uh, essentially, yeah, you can look it up. I'm, I'm going sure. right now. Go, go to Google Earth down by the Bay of Pigs, and it'll, it'll give you the name of it. So it, it was crazy because I guess – from what I understand is Castro had some kind of a, uh, a real, real, uh, infatuation with like Tahiti. Yeah. And so like the lodge part of this place, you had this big round, you know, if, like the lakes down in Florida, which really don't have a whole lot of contour or 
bays really to them. A lot of them are just kind of like shallow bowls. Yeah. And so this lake was like that. And then he had dug a dike system, you know, kind of going back in to a bunch of thatch roof huts. And then he had this like great big Brazilian hardwood lodge Tahiti style back in there. But this was after Fidel had died. And so they had actually turned it into a national park, I believe. But uh, you still have to have permission, I think, to fish it, which we got. But it was really, it was a really cool. You have to have permission to say the word fish. I think you have to have permission to do anything in Cuba. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot going on there right now. I would not want to be in that country at the moment, as they are protesting their lack of freedoms and lack of food and lack of medicine. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't actually kept up. thought about. So they're doing a lot of protesting. They're out of food. They're out of medicine, and you know. It's, 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 there's been some protests, and obviously those people will be probably punished severely. But um, I actually thought about, wow, what if there's people down there right now on these fishing adventures that are in that, yeah, that get mix. in there vis-a-vis education to fish, and they're they could possibly be stuck down there through this. Like that's kind of a scary situation. Yeah, they're only a cigarette boat ride away from the Key West. Well, so they should be. That's fine. what's so sad about it is 90 miles away in Key West, there's everything. Yeah. And then, boy, here. you got that right. There's everything. <laughs> 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 so, on your adventures, what's the, let's say the the most dangerous or threatening animal encounter you've had? Oh, uh, you know, probably, <laughs> probably I can. Those that, armadillos? That, no, that that one's that one's really easy. <laughs> again, again, I was with uh, my buddies from Yellow Dog, and uh, we were down at uh, or I was in Kamchatka, and. There were, they had a bear dog there, and the bear dog was an old bear dog, not a, uh, <laughs> not a, not a young spry one that had great hearing. And we had, you know, that evening we had proceeded to carry on doing what Russians do, which was drink vodka. I was about to say, drink vodka. Yeah. We were drinking vodka and eating salmon for like the 95th day, actually like the seventh day in a row. And I, I had I'd kind of gotten tired of the fish, so I would probably had a little too much vodka that evening. And uh, I was up by the fireplace and, you know, when you're around the fire and you're listening to music and you're out in the middle of the wilderness, even if you're in Russia, it feels like you're in, you know, Alaska (laughs) or whatever. And, uh, and I went stumbling away from the fire to, uh, to go to the bathroom and I accidentally stepped on this old bear, this old deaf bear dog. And she, uh, she turned around and took a chunk out of my Achilles tendon. Oh, Oh, no. Yeah. And so here I am, you know, 400 miles out away from, uh, from the nearest city in Russia with no transportation or anything, and I've got a dog bite on my Achilles tendon. And vodka. And that is when, you know, there's a reason that you that, that if you're going to go traveling somewhere, you go with, like, guys that do it for a living, like the Yellow Dog guys or, you know, your shop that, yeah, that does, you know, know that what to kind do of when there's a medical yeah. emergency. Ian Davis, the other owner. Fins West. The, the other owner, Yellow Dog, you know, he, of course, he had, like, you know, the most powerful antibiotics in the world. So started a course of those, you know. Quit drinking vodka for a couple hours and we were good. Laguna so it was a bear dog. Tesoro. That was your <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, <laughs> old, old yeller yeah. was hungry. What's the name of it? Laguna del Tesoro. That's it. Yes, sir. If you zoom in there, you can see the little thatched roofs and stuff and the little the canal there. I see a lot of burned out stuff. Wow. Mm. Uh, actually, maybe it's not in existence. I don't anymore. see any. But I'll tell you, the, one of the craziest thing that, <laughs> things down there when when we were fishing was. We came around the corner and we had a, we actually had some fishing guides that were fly guys that, that guide a little bit on that Laguna del Tesoro mm-hmm. in the spring. But I was there midsummer and they're like, oh, you can't catch bass midsummer. And I was like, yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, t- old Tom by from the Drake was, you know, he had his little, uh, he had his Dahlberg diver and he was with one of the guides and I was with Klug and we were with another guy and I gave Klug a spinning rod and he looked at me, he's like, what am I going to do with this? I was like, just watch, I'll show you. And, uh, we went and we, we had a great time fishing. You know, you go to Cuba, the place is hardly ever fished. You'd think it would just be amazing, but it was just like any other bass fishing that I've ever experienced, which is yeah. bass, bass make you work for it. They're, they're, they're big and fat and lazy for a reason. So you gotta, yeah. you gotta really figure them out if you want to catch the big ones so we had wow. a lot of fun but there was a uh long story short there were there were dudes down there with uh two by fours on top of truck inner tubes and they're out there doing the uh doing the homemade float tube thing hey, Amy, what? make it oh, work yeah. they would they were out there and they but i mean they like every made fish, doing a test run or <laughs> no no they were they were out there kicking around they didn't have fins or anything they were just out there wow. kicking around and 
and do a uh, they were fishing. <laughs> Shannon knows where I was going with that. I do. The well, test run. The test run, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we all picked up on we, that. We picked some up. <laughs> you did? Yeah, we did. When you were on the carrier? Yeah, we did. We left Lauderdale. We had just left Lauderdale the first time I'd ever been there. And we're this trucking episode's on. Navy story brought but, to you by Fly Shop but, it, but it flows right into what you're talking about and kind of what you talked about, people not having food and things like yeah. that. We we had left Lauderdale and we were hammering down pretty good. And all of a sudden, this the ship, you could just feel it like, what's going on here? We make this turn. And there was two Haitians who had truck tire inner tubes tied together. Mm. And they were paddling. Um, so our um, diver... They went out and they got them and they they take their knife and they destroyed the vessel and brought them off. But but if you look, uh, you think we, those guys were freaked out when they saw a U.S. Uh, aircraft carrier like pulling up beside? It them was like, even better fuck. because we all went to look. So what happened was the ship just does not stop on a dime, right? So we're <laughs> slowing down and making this turn, and and they thought that we were leaving them. And the dude just kind of like chunked his thing and was going, yeah, yeah, you know, like this, you know. But, Ay, me, but they, yeah, they they flew him back. They take him the medical, and then they flew him back, and then they uh, did what they had to do with them yeah. there. But uh, you talk about that test run, man. no doubt. Uh, those people are willing to try that. I, yeah. They look like they're pretty good with an inner tube and a <laughs> two by four. I'll tell I you think that. there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I have escape, never man. thought about bass fishing and bass Cuba. fishing, even anywhere Caribbean. Yeah, like even in Belize. I mean, we went to Belize. I didn't. It, bass never crossed my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I always think of peacock bass. Yeah, well, right. But yeah. there's a lot of different bass species too. I mean, we think a large mouth, small mouth, red eye, things like that. But there are so many bass species in this world. Yeah, it's the, there's there's two main large mouth species in the u.s which is the f1 fish from florida florida mm-hmm. strain largemouth there's northern strain largemouth florida strain largemouth get substantially bigger than the northern strain largemouth mm. um so like when you hear the guys catching double digit fish the 10 10 11 12 pounders mm-hmm. that's usually florida very 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 rare to see a northern fish get up that big I gotcha. but uh so that's that's what they have essentially in cuba is exactly the same strain of bass they have in florida so they're large mouth they're like florida strain large well cuban strain large mouth <laughs> cubano what uh what you know what size fish were you getting well it was, it was funny because you know we went down there and i i, I see this place and i'm like oh man i'm gonna there's grass there like we're gonna punch jigs into grass catch them that way couldn't catch them doing that you know the the one the one these bait, fish don't know english they'll never hear me coming <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, the, the one the one bait for bass that you know when the when the going gets tough you throw a weightless senko if you know what that is mm-hmm. yeah and uh, you know I ended up having to throw a weightless senko in Cuba at the most amazing bass fishing place I've ever been to and the first fish I caught was nine pounds no way it's like yeah. throwing the squirmy yeah <laughs> like saying, it's, I, yeah well, let's throw the squirmy boys yeah yeah you see go, what happens you know somebody tells you oh you're gonna go to Alaska tomorrow it's gonna be awesome you're gonna fish a river that hasn't been fished in. 27 years and it's going to be you know fish are going to be stupid they're going to be eating the shoelaces off your boots and you go out there and can't catch them on anything except the squirmy, squirmy. yeah same deal <laughs> mop fly you know that's it man that's awesome so what's what's the uh the best advice you could give somebody being that we do have all these new people coming in the sport like what's some good advice you could give them just getting in like hey they just started fishing in the last couple months you know, I, I've I've actually got the perfect piece of advice for somebody, whether you're learning to fly fish or fish in general, and that is enjoy the process. Mm, that's a good good point. You know, there's there's a there's a lot of people that get out there and, and you know, they're in this YouTube, Instagram, yeah. you know, whatever world of the grip and grin. Look, I Instant caught another gratification. Look, I caught another twenty inch fish, you yeah. know, the the whole grip and grin thing. They're, they're, whether you're talking about bass fishing or you're talking about fly fishing or streamer fishing or dry fly fishing, whatever you're doing, there's a process to really to, to doing it, and that that is the journey. Too many people look at the end result or whether they're going to get that fish picture for their Instagram account rather than looking at looking at what you're experiencing on the water and enjoying yeah. that. You know, that's that's my perspective on it. No, it's a good perspective. I mean, I feel that way just going somewhere to fish. It's like the preparation, the planning. The packing, oh, I need to buy this certain piece of gear. Like, all that's that entire experience. It's not just catching the fish. It's like the entire process of getting there. Um, so, no, that's awesome advice. Yeah. Is, I, is be patient with it. Yeah, you, you know, I – and what brings me to that whole thing is when I was fishing on the circuit, you know, I, I was I was under a lot of pressure because I'm spending money out there fishing, trying to make money, like kind of like being a pro golfer. 
And, uh, you know, I, I look back on it now and I was fishing 250 days a year on my bass boat by myself, getting ready for these tournaments. And I don't miss the tournaments. I don't, I miss the competition part of it a little bit, but really what I miss more than anything was the going out there by myself and being on the boat and trying to figure it out. And I realized that, you know, when I look back on it, I was in such a frantic yeah. state of mind to try and figure it out you and to try and make it all work that I wasn't able to really sit back and, you know, I probably would have done a lot better too. But yeah. Kind of like Ohante in a home run derby, man. Trying to force it. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. Him too. Yep. Well, well, I also learned a lot of that stuff from, you know, I, 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 some it tuck fly shop here. Some of the guys here do take me fishing once in a while. So maybe but like Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Hey, man. No problem. I had a, gr- I had a great, and Jack, day. And Jack. Sorry. great day. Yeah, yeah. Jack, Jack, Jack's uh, no oh, longer yeah. with us. They both stepped Not, around that bees. Didn't <laughs> he's, he's he's didn't we, we both dodged the bees nest somehow. That, that's right. That was a funny day. You know, I'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fish that day. Uh, well, Shannon, yeah. I have the notion to use the restroom. So that means it's time for the fishing report. Okay. There you go. Fishing report. There it is. If you're driving, find the nearest rest stop. That's right. This <laughs> fishing report is brought to you by Norvice. They sponsor everything. Ty, better flies. E fishing. Faster as well. <laughs> and faster. That's right. So, um, man, fished a blue line in South Central JA. Yeah, man. South Central Jackson County. So J A. And uh J A. J A. Does that work that way? I I don't know. I just made that up because it rounds with LA. So. Oh. Lower Alabama. Yeah. But South Central, the water temp at just under three thousand feet was fifty two degrees. And that was stellar. I mean, yeah, that's it, fantastic man, this time of year. Yeah, it, it really was. And and that's brought to you by popcorn thunderstorms and cooler lows at night. So um fishing was fantastic and perfect setup for that water tip. You have bluing olives ri- uh, rising in the morning. Fish responded to them. And guess what I was fishing? Chubby Chernobyl. <laughs> Liked it up. It's summer, man. It's Liked summer. it up, man. It's, big it's, it's 9 Chernobyl. o'clock in the morning. There's blue wings rising. Fish are sipping. I'm throwing a chubby. Protein. Lighting it up, Protein. Boys. Protein. So, um, had, had a nymph on as a dropper. A little mini mop fly as a dropper. And oh, they, you're cheating, huh? No, no it's, it's, it's like a little caddis pupa. It's, a little it's, soft it's, tackle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh it's sexy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they didn't want nothing to do with it. Oh, I'm so sad. They were eating the Chernobyl. So um, it was. It was. What color amazing. was the Chernobyl? Uh, the Royal. Royal. That's a good I, one. I really? find this time of year the like, the oh, Royal yeah. the Royal Wolves. Yeah. Maybe we'll sell two or three. I don't know. Uh, maybe but four or five. I, I may have already tied our I, you su- know it's, supply. It's, it's up for debate. <laughs> but something about the Royal works. <laughs> <laughs> so something it's about the Royal been works stellar. in this time of year. Yes, and you got the Montana same thing. August. Yeah. August, Royal Wolf, Royal Coachman of Montana is fantastic. Right, absolutely. So, sun comes out, 10, 11 o'clock, sulfur start, right? Sulfur's going off, mm-hmm. and then yellow sallies yeah. all over the place. Fish rising. It was it was a lot of fun. So, you know, we're obviously the terrestrials are the game to play right now because you can um, throw those big mayflies. We're still seeing some drakes yeah. in, in some of these elevations, and right. depending on the sedimentation, we're still seeing drakes, those yellow drakes. We typically see those top out in May, lower elevations, but we're seeing them still in the summer in the southern Appalachian. So yeah. get out there, folks. It's a great time. Uh, your bourbon tip of the week, I just learned to love Kentucky mules. So is that a saddle? Montana drink. mule. Oh, well, well, a drink. I, I thought it's you Montana mule. Yeah. That, you walk yeah. into a bar in the south, and that's for a Montana mule. <laughs> at least they did at the Grove Park that night. Like, oh, you mean Kentucky mule. Oh, sure. I, I just want to get a drink and watch the sunset. Oh, I want a saddle mule. But what That's I did weird. find out, here, here's your pro tip, okay? okay? This, right. this might be your guide tip of the week. Sorry, Bobby. But the Tuck Fly Shop Campfire Coffee Mug doubles as a great mug if you don't have the copper for the Kentucky or Montana Mule. So a mm. little bit of bourbon, a little bit of ginger beer, a lime, and about 45 minutes later, you're right. Mm. <laughs> well, and your wife's driving home. Do you like, do you like mules? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> My wife does not like them. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Do you, you want to know the most and crazy or the crazy thing about the mule was, in, you know, I for those of you real history buffs, you all can call me up or blackmail me or whatever you're going to do for saying this. But so the, there's a bar called the Wise River Bar in Montana, and they have made the Moscow mule there for like 25 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And you know the 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 age old story is that the copper mugs came from the copper mine in Butte originally. Oh, really? Uh, okay. I didn't know that. And the age old story is that the Irish miners and the Russians used to basically drink those together to get along. That was the age old story no of way. the original Moscow Mule. But the first time I ever drank one was I'm sorry, Wise River Club is what it's called. And uh, that was the first time I ever drank one, and uh, it, I mean, it was it probably dirt. 25 years ago. No kidding. And, and so, you know, that's really, so when all this, so the original ginger beer for the uh, for the Moscow Mule was originally, and you can still find it, you can order it online. Actually, I believe that Publix carries it. It's called Cock and Bull. Yeah. Like a rooster in a, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. In a bull. Yeah. And that's the original ginger beer that they made the Moscow Mules out of. Wow. So it was Stoli Vodka originally with, with the cock and bull in a copper mug. And that was the Moscow Mule. And then, of yes. course, for the Montana or Kentucky, of it's course, some whiskey I think, I think that all I think all that came later. You know, well, I mean, sure. No, no. Sure. I mean, for, for pop culture purposes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that is neat. I never knew that. Well, I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what somebody told me when that I was... That is some, like, I'm running up with in a it. bar one it sounded time. good. You heard it here. See, but see, that's the stuff that if you're sitting at a bar with Bobby... And be like, yeah, man, it was it was so the Irish and the Russians. I'd have Googled it if I had my Googled phone. it and be like, no, right here it says the Russians and the Chinese. Oh, so Bobby's Google police? I didn't oh, know yeah, that. Man. Oh, shoot. You better be glad my phone's right <laughs> You know what? I'm, 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 I'm never coming on this deal again. Uh, I'll like, Google yeah. it afterwards. Yeah. My wife does that to me. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm yeah. like actually. I was, can't tell this guy anything. Today, today we're on the way back. I was like, man, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy drive for Boone to Brevard. Brevard. That's crazy. That's a crazy drive. Man, yeah. I bet it's no, it's probably about the same as us. I bet it's two hours. No, no, no. I actually pulled Google police on him. It's two and a half. Yeah. Silver to boot. So, but no, it, Googling stuff, that's a part of our daily dialogue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fact yeah. checkers. The, Fact the, checkers is the The best part now. about Google is when you when you figure something out that somebody's wrong, you get to act like you knew it the whole time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like <laughs> So when somebody's <laughs> like, when somebody's like, oh, man, that happened in 1983, and you get on your Google phone, you can look at them and you know, kind of squint your eyes at them and be yep, like, NC you, State one, you dumbass, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, they just go to me for the music. That's it. There you go. That's right. That's there you go. Well, Shannon. Yeah. All hearts and minds clear. Yeah. Watch out for the bears. This is fun, boys. Yep. Chris, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, you guys, yeah. thanks for having me. It's yeah. uh, you know, this awesome shop. You guys, shops. You Plural. guys have and. Yeah. Uh, Waynesville's opening tomorrow. Wayne Good luck in Waynesville. Uh, Thank you. For those of you that are interested in the soft opening, head on up there to Waynesville tomorrow. <laughs> That's it. There'll be some more. Hey, is there going to be a hard blushing? opening? When is the know. hard opening? I don't know. We don't know. Uh, August 2nd, maybe. we set that up with the chamber. It'll be like 2nd, August the 2nd. I don't know. I will call August your, 1 is on a Sunday. Is it on Google yet? I'm waiting for that little postcard. Oh, let me it. tell you guys what, man. I mean, if it's not Google, it's not even soft yet. <laughs> Once That's it's okay. on Google, We're then it's an opening. It. That's okay. <laughs> We're prominent. Thank Nobody you. will walk in tomorrow, but I'll be there working on a table or something. There's there's still little plot projects to do. Yep. So somebody's camera is going nuts. That thing was purple. It was this one. Mm. Um, hey, we tell every guest this. You're the best one we've ever had. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> really enjoyed it. We don't have a dishwasher, so keep that glass. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's all for you. You can take uh, two if you need a oh, matching right. set. When, when I ran out the first time, I started licking the rim, so I guess I better <laughs> keep it. Nothing, Cooties. Nothing like a rim licker. Cooties. <laughs> <laughs> all right, take us home, Shannon. All right, everybody. Thank you once again for listening to the exciting, entertaining, and informative episode of the Tutcast. We'll catch you all next week. That wraps up another exciting and informative episode of the Tuckcast with a splash of bourbon presented by Tuckasichi Fly Shop and Guide Service located at 3 Depot Street, Bryson City, North Carolina and 530 West Main Street, Silva, North Carolina. Be sure to visit www.tuckflyshop.com for stream flow information, book a guided trip, or even shop for your favorite Tuckasichi Fly Shop gear. Follow the crew on Facebook at Tuckasegee Fly Shop, Instagram at Tuck Fly Shop, and on YouTube at Tuckasegee Fly Shop. If you have a question or comment, feel free to send those to info at tuckflyshop.com or give us a call 1 828 
four eight eight three 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 three. For Coach Del Diesel Collins, Bobby the Bearded Wonder Bennett, I'm Shannon Big Mess Messer. We'll catch you next week. Be sure to catch a few fish out there, won't you? Y'all take care.